and welcome to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is John Bunn, and today I'm joined again by my best good buddy, Mr. Nick Miller. Hi, Nick. Hello. What is up? Oh, you know, not much. Just uh, here. Glad glad to be here. Um, you know, took a, took a week off, some personal time with life going on and stuff uh, last week, but, um, you know, doing, doing well, doing good. Glad to uh, record a podcast. Feeling great, excited about stuff. What about what about you? That's pretty generic. I like it. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm doing really well. Uh, I feel like I have done a good job of setting boundaries in my life recently and like calming mm-hmm. life down. Uh, I've spent a lot of family time lately. Went to the yeah. park last night with the kids and had Chipotle and like just uh, and the wife, of course. But like, you know, just uh, having time uh, away from, you know, for us, it's really busy October through January with how to film weddings. And then it yeah. kind of like whew, February just kind of hit and we were all tired. And so now we're here in March, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, quarter of the year is almost over. But I man, know. I'm doing well. Uh, Good. I, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I would. I was just gonna say another another reason that I'm feeling good. good. Great. <laughs> another good. reason I'm feeling good is because yesterday I, I delivered a wedding film to a couple. I got them their wedding film, their ceremony, their toast, all the edits, and I used one of the sponsors of our podcast, VidFlow, to deliver it to them. This nice player. I can embed it in my website. It looks. Looks really, really nice. Their uh, paper project, VidFlow, is. And so if you would like more information about VidFlow and how they can uh, help your business, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash VidFlow, and you can uh, check them out. So, Great John, plug. Yeah. Dude, um, we should probably talk about our guest, maybe. Well, it, this, this week starts off with Stanton just like, oh, hey, yeah. welcome to my podcast. So... Maybe we should just cut to that and people can experience. Yeah, Stanton, why don't you introduce us to the How to Film Weddings podcast? Well, guys, thanks for being a part of the How to Film Weddings podcast. Today I'm joined by John Bunn and Nick Miller. I don't know if you guys have heard of them, but they're big wigs. They're wearing big wigs. John's got one on top of his head. Nick's got one on the bottom of his mouth. Guys, what do you have to say to start? Well, thank you for having us on today, Stanton. I really appreciate that. And... Honestly, it's just a big honor to be sitting in the same room with you. Nick, what about you, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. You know, it'd be nice to um, like have my own podcast. I, th- I think that's a really good idea. Maybe I should. I, I, I like how this feels. Is it a lot of work? I don't know. So maybe. I mean, maybe most I people should... have started one. Um, yeah, that's true. If, that's true. Yeah. If you don't have a podcast in 23, you're out of business by 24. It's I just... think so. I think so. Hondo. 100%. So, well, thanks for having us on. Seriously, appreciate it. I know you've got a busy schedule and stuff. And so, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. yeah so, um, I can't, what do you, I can't uh, keep taking, I can't keep taking, what do you, what do you want to talk about? What, what, what do you, what do you, you know? <laughs> This yeah, is the intro. Is this is how we're this is how is we're this, doing it? This is how we're going to start. I think so. I don't I, hopefully, by this point, people know that that was a joke, right? I think so. At this point, uh, you've this been. This is on, going I to be someone's is... introduction to the How to Film Weddings podcast, and they're going to think that your voice, Stanton, was the voice. Of they're the going to be so confused. They're going to be. If so I blow confused. up and never talk to you guys again after this podcast comes out, we'll know why. Understandable. Okay. Okay. We get it. Yeah. We get, we get what it's like to fly this close to the sun. We get it. <laughs> Call me Icarus. <laughs> Give me them wings. <laughs> we understand. No, Stanton oh. from Films by Stanton is here today Hi. hosting. We're his guests yeah. on the How to yeah. Film Weddings podcast. I'm John Bunn. That's Nick Miller. We're here. We're live. Lots of big things going on. Stanton, everybody knows who you are. You're a filmmaker of the year. You travel the world. But... Uh, you know, maybe if someone out there doesn't know you, where are you from? Who are you? Give us like 10 seconds. And then the episode numbers that you've been on before, you probably remember them. Okay. Oh, the episode numbers. So <laughs> I know the number of episodes. <clears throat> um, my name is Stanton Giles. Some people like to call me Cody. That's my first name. My middle name is Stanton. Look at, look how comfortable I've become. I, I'll even say my name's Cody on the How to Film wow. podcast. Wow. That's big. So not to confuse people. That's the first name. Middle name Stanton. Sounds way better than films by Cody. Um, even though I like my name. Um, live in Denver, Colorado. Have some awesome off- office mates. You've probably heard of Multiply Media, True the Director. Got a big mountain dog pup. 
and yeah, that's about it. That's about all I do. I like I like filming epic weddings. I like to travel. Iceland's my jam. Um, destination weddings. That's my thing. Yep. Yeah, that was such a such a lukewarm it was, introduction. It was it was very like uh, podcasty. I I liked it. It was good. Yeah, it, it, like it was check good. the boxes. Um, well, we wanted to have you back around a because every time you're on, we get more followers. So thank you guys for listening. Because Stanton's on. Honestly, that's really oh, it. We don't have sarcasm. any plans outside of that. Just your face, your hair. Can we talk about his hair for a sec, Nick? Like, Dude, what would you so give? Good. What would you give for a head of hair like that? Like, um. I don't know if I can like for, say it on for one radio. day. Okay. It looks like this once or twice. Once or twice every six weeks. Um, you know, I would take. Wow. I would take days. once or twice every six weeks than what I have right now. So, yeah, it's it's glorious. We're no. talking about hair. Yeah. Oh, well, on, so. on on top of the head. On top of the head. <laughs> I got it everywhere else. Just on top. Okay. All right. If you haven't tuned out, thank you so much for still being here. You are the dedicated, the loyal. It's like those TikTok videos. It's like, all right, if you're not a guy, swipe on. And then they say something like, do you guys realize whenever right. you're like, and they keep going and say, like, all right, but right. for real now. Anyway, that's what, if you're still here, <sighs> thank you. We wanted to talk to Stanton today. It's been a minute um, since we've had you on, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you did live film reviews with us the other day. We were just chit chatting about a bunch of stuff you've got coming up. And before we hit record or before you've heard us on the air, we were talking about a few things um, regarding Mm. creativity and editing and just wanted to kind of have a conversation around that. Nick, I was in the other room whenever uh, you guys were really getting deep on that. So why don't you kick us off with whatever the heck you want to talk about? It's our show. We can do whatever we want. Yeah, it is. It is. And, um, but, you know, right as we're getting ready to jump into this, Stanton and I were talking I'm sorry, I'm going to start that sentence over because I don't think it came out correctly. Before we hopped on here, Stanton and I were chatting a little bit about creativity. And I know for me, it's always been something where I was thinking, well, either I'm creative or I'm not. Have you ever been talking to someone like, oh, I'm a wedding videographer? And they're like, oh, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And, you know, I've heard that phrase before. And there's lots of people that say that. And as Stanton and I were chatting, uh, he was like, you know what? I... I believe that creativity can be learned and just kind of this philosophy, um, you know, from him and him, you know, having his background in engineering, you know, just kind of figuring stuff out and piecing stuff together. I know that's a part of it. So Stan, why don't you just share a little bit about uh, what you mean by you believing that creativity can be learned and how have you leaned into that and learned into it? Learned into Ooh, it? Have learned you learned it. into it? Ooh, I'll I'll learn into it. learned into it. I, I don't know. I don't know. Figure We're that out. We're learning, learning into that. things. <laughs> yeah, we are. Isn't that no. good? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we started talking off about that. Um, kind of like I said before we started recording, this idea is something that um, I do get a little excited around. If you guys remember me talking at Venture, I like leaned into like trying and putting an effort and all that kind of stuff and almost turned into like a TED Talk more than like a... <laughs> <laughs> it's more like uh, helping videographers out with tangible things. But um, the idea of creativity being learned is something that I am, I do get stoked on. I'm scared to say the word passionate because I feel like that's so overused. That's like saying cinematic, which I do say a lot. But um, it is something I, I'm passionate about because I truly believe it. And the reason I believe it is because I feel like I'm a product of it. Um, and not to say, like we were talking about, Nick, that people aren't born Um, or gain different levels of creativity through life. Um, But I think regardless of where you're at on this very subjective, uh, unknown scale of creativity, that there are tangible things that you can do to get from, let's say, on one far side of it being uncreative, there's tangible things you can do to get to being creative. Um, And I say that, like I said, because I think that I'm a product of that. I came into the wedding industry and I didn't know anything. Well, I came into the, you know, just being a videographer in general, I didn't know anything and I was bad. I mean, that's most of our stories. Um, And not to say that I I am where I want to be yet, uh, but but the reason that I've gotten to where I am now is because I've put in intentional effort into figuring out okay, what do I really need to do? And, and people have heard me say this before of like, when I would see a wedding filmmaker's film and there was a particular shot that I really liked, I'd watch that shot on repeat like 10, 12 times, maybe like two dozen times uh, watching the movement, trying to figure out what focal length they are on, messaging them and being like kind of creepy. Like, hey, at two minutes and 43 seconds, 
like what focal length were you on and like where were you in the room and could like just asking these very specific questions because um like I always say, you don't have to be like an athlete that that's born with a certain, you know, genetic makeup and practice your whole life and, and get drafted into the NBA and all this kind of stuff to be successful. Um, you, it, we're, we're holding an electronic device, uh, as, as videographers, um, and we're working with editing software where we're clicking, uh, clicking our mouse and we're making decisions like that. And we're working with audio and things that, there are ways to learn how to get from point A to point B of being better than you are now. And to me, like being better, the better you get, the more creative you become. I think that like that, that, that those two can go hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know, uh, there, there are some people, I'm sure that all of you listening to this can think of someone that just oozes creativity. Right. And it's like, it's, it's not, it's not fair. How good that like, there's this one guy that I, that I knew uh, going to church and he is an incredible artist. He draws incredible. One of the things that he always does is he just has a little sketch pad with him and everywhere he, he doesn't get out his cell phone. He doesn't do that. He sits there and he gets out his sketch pad and he just starts looking around the room and drawing. And it's just like mm. all of this creativity and he creates these beautiful pieces of art. And I think that we have conditioned ourselves to think that if I can't do that, then I, I can't <sighs> a- achieve it. Right. I, I'm there. I, I'm not, I'm just not creative. I'm not creative like that, yeah. but Stan, like you were taught, like I would, I would venture that most people listening that would say that you have created some of the most creative edits that they have watched. They're engaging, you know, pe- your edits are incredible, but you yourself said, you. you know, you're, you're welcome. And I mean it too. Um, I'm not just, you know, saying that cause I'm a guest on your podcast. Um, you know, people, <laughs> <laughs> but you yourself said where I started, I wasn't very good. And I think all of us, if we take a look at where we started creating films and then down the road, you can, Oh, I have gotten more creative. I have gotten better. So, um, in, in that vein, you're talking about, it can be learned. There is a process. We're going from a is not creative and B is creative. Can you think of anything off the top of your head? Practically speaking, that if someone's head has a really good set of hair on it, just so you know, the top of his head, look at the hair. I'm sorry. Okay. Back to you, Nick. Sorry. (laughs) It's a haircut. John was just giving you a minute to to think about this. Can you think of anything practically that if someone says, I want to film more creatively, I want to film more cinematically, I want to film more like this person, that person, whatever. Can you think of anything practically that you could would say to them? uh, These are some things that you should experiment with or try or look at. Yeah. Um, Yeah. In tangent when answering that question, I want to go back to something you were saying that like sometimes people look at people that are creative and they're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't have a creative bone in my body. I could never do what that person does. And we tend to remove ourselves from like we, t- we tend to think of ourselves as being in a different realm almost than them that like being able to touch whatever holy grail fountain of youth that they've been able to experience with their creativity is unattainable for us um, when in actuality um, it's not. And I, I guess that's just the, the, the simplest way I can say it. And so tangible things that I, I preface by saying that before getting into what are some tangible things to kind of bridge the gap between you know, not being able to shoot cinematically, wanting to shoot cinematically, and then being able to do it practically. Um, I, I think I, I want to start off by saying, I don't think it's, I want to start off with what, what I think it's not. And I don't think it's, getting into this, like, I think it can come out of this, this way of thinking or this way of setting yourself up. But I don't think if you, if you're not predispositioned to being super creative, like myself, then sitting down and listening to like inspirational music and drinking caffeine and getting really excited and amped, uh, isn't going to like spawn creativity for me. Um, for me, I need to, I need to actually have something tangible to start doing, um, in order to start getting down that road. And so uh, that's a, that's kind of a long preface, but I am into trying to get people to understand this idea that if you don't, if you're somewhere where you don't have something tangible and you want something tangible, the first thing that you have to do is you're going to have to find inspiration somewhere. Uh, and I think inspiration is huge. I think people are scared to find inspiration sometimes because you can be inspired and like people's edits, but then they like 
again, remove themselves from this idea of doing anything similar to them because they feel like they're going to copy them. Um, and I think that that when you start to mimic people's styles that you like, that's going to get you down a road of harnessing who you are in this world in the way that you see it. Um, because, you know, as videographers um, and editors alike, the way that um, we're, we're pretty blessed to be able to, it, it's a way that we can manifest ourselves in this world, how we see the world. Um, you know, like I see the world, uh, the way that I feel most inspired is through really epic cinematic Iceland films. Um, and, you know, the films that I started off that I would, let's just say, copied or used as my inspiration, um, they weren't those per se, but they had really beautiful shots in there. And then as I felt myself come alive, as I got better um, and started living more in alignment with who I wanted to be as I got older, then those things I learned from, let's just use the word copying or mimicking or learning from somebody else's styles became my own style. And so I guess tangibly saying, I would say, like, find inspiration from somebody that you like and don't be scared to copy them. Like, I bet I've gone into, and it's not going to be a copy because every wedding day is different. Every lighting scenario is different. The way you're shooting, it's going to be different. And like the way that you're going to color, it's going to be different. And so, like, whether it's a DP you like, or if it's a uh, wedding videographer or a shot, you know, from Lord of the Rings or Braveheart or something, screenshot that, take it to a wedding with you and try to mimic it, mimic it to the best of your ability. Um, and then I would say like, and I, I'm just going to speak from my experience. If you're motivated by somebody's films, talk to them, Ment get a mentor session. Well, a lot of people, and I, I realized this actually at Venture, uh, guys, when we were there, whenever I was talking about what my why behind why I shoot getting ready this way or reception details or portraits or ceremonies, it was cool to see that there was a lot more why going on underneath the surface than I even gave myself credit for. I don't know if you guys have seen that happen with you when in your education before, like when people ask you a question, you have to pause for a second and think. Um, and then to yourself at the beginning, you might feel like you're kind of pulling something out of your butt. But in actuality, it's like, I'm I'm actually uncovering a subliminal way that my mind is logically working through this. And I think that that, is that something that's happened with you two before? Does that make sense oh. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so that, that's like happened with me a lot. And that's been a way by people even just asking me, I've been able to logically, logically lay it out for them to where they have an aha moment of, Oh, that's a tangible thing I can do. Um, you know, be like, let's just say, for example, somebody really likes my getting ready shots or my makeup shots. Um, John's just a constant head nod over there. He's just head nodding. I'm not, I'm not, I'm listening to ice ice baby on my, Oh, uh, right, right. My it's ear pods BPM, here. I thought. I also um, just have this nice groove listening to you. I got like a little bounce going on and I'm just comfortable. Like you're soothing me. I'm, I'm enjoying what you're saying. Just like I bet a lot of people are doing, you know, just listen. <laughs> I hope so. Sorry. I will stop. I hope it's making you. sense. I'm trying to make some, make sure that it's tangible, but, uh, a lot of times I, I want people to understand these ideas and like, I, I just don't, I, it, I guess to the to people that are listening, I want to say like, don't be scared to reach out to people that you look mm -hmm. up to because if, let's say you do find inspiration for somebody and, but you don't understand how they got that shot. You've watched a shot 12, 15 times or something. And this is in regards to answering your question about shooting cinematically, Nick. Well, if you're inspired by it, but you still can't figure out how to shoot like them, well, ask them. How they like I don't I can't tell you how many people that I thought were way above my pay pay grade of being able to even talk to get back to you um, and will answer certain questions and even use terms in the beginning that I didn't even understand. I remember um, there the idea of parallax when I first started off um, mm -hmm. uh, happening with like drone movements or like with when you have compression of something like eighty five moving side to side with the the background moving in relation to your subject. I just looked at the image and I was like, that looks really cool. Why do I like how this looks? And I couldn't even say it. I couldn't even say, I was like, what? And it, it was this travel videographer and he had this shot of this pig or something. And it was a pig with like a tree behind it. But the movement, this creaminess of the bokeh behind them moving, uh, I was like, bro, how are you getting the shot? I was so, and this is back in my like first few years. Um, and he's like, what are you talking about? And we had to go kind of back and forth. He's like, oh, parallax. He's like, yeah, just like, I, I put an 85 on a gimbal and I moved side to side or something. Um, and, and I was like, that was a big aha moment for me. And I, I realized that you, that compression was not only beautiful, but when you move with compression mm -hmm. that it, it creates parallax, which is, which can be a really, uh, 
bold statement kind of in a film with like um, some really subtle but beautiful smooth movement going on. And so mm-hmm. um, that's just, I guess, like trying to bridge that gap of explaining something tangible that people yeah. can do. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, one of my biggest things is when I teach, and I'm sure other people do this, but I'm only aware of myself. But when I teach, like whenever you guys had me come on for Mastermind last year, um, I sat down and I was like, I have to figure out the best way to describe this to people because I want them to really, un- like what's the point of going through life and just doing stuff just to do it? Like I want to make sure that my impact is actually going to help people understand things. And I think that people can. And I think that we, what we saw and what I saw, at least on the on the back end was people being like, dude, thanks so much for helping me like bridge the gap between something that seems so like looking at your films and not understanding how to you breaking down all these different shots and me understanding, oh, that's how you do it. Because they're, mm-hmm. it's literally you just holding a camera in a room with exposing properly, white balance, composition, telling your subject what to do. You know? Yeah. So as you, as, as you were talking, one of the things that I came up in, you know, we're talking about being creative and creatively, and I'm sh- like shifting it to like editing a little bit. Um, one of the things that I'm, I'm thinking of is that most of the, uh, people that have edits that you, it just makes your, you know, your mouth drop to the floor and you're like, Oh, that, you know, you're drooling over. It's incredible. I would venture Stan that if we pulled out one of your films and I started talking to you about the edit and I said, why did you use this shot? Why did you use that shot? Why did you use this shot? Then that shot. And I started asking you why on a lot of stuff, I have a feeling that you are going to be able to give me a concrete answer for why it is that you decided to shoot this way, or you decided to edit it this way. Edit. There, mm-hmm. There's a purpose behind your things. And I think whenever most people get started um, in weddings, in creating films, they fall into two things. One, they are putting something in because it happened on the wedding day and they feel like they have to. Stuff like the garter or the cake cutting or events in the wedding day that don't really mesh necessarily well with whatever story it is. Or people fall into the trap of why did you do this? Because it looked cool. Like, why did you edit it this way? Why is it upbeat? Why is it this or that? Use it because it looked cool. But other than that, they don't really have an answer. And whenever it comes to being creative, When it comes to editing, if you're asking that question, why, why am I doing this? What is the purpose of this? I think that that will help you be more creative as you're listening to the bride's vows. And we're actually editing one right now where the couple story is they met like 12 years ago. Mm. They almost got together, but they didn't ended up living life apart for like eight years went through a bunch of life stuff. Now they're together. And so it's, so as I was talking to Jen about the edit, she's like, I'm having this image of like a flower. Can we find some stock footage of a flower, like blooming out of the ground? And then whenever they break, they don't get together. Like it wilts, but then we reverse it whenever they get back together. And it's like being very intentional in like imagery and all this kind of stuff. So, um, I don't know what my question is other than that was my thought. And, and would you, (laughs) <laughs> would you would you agree with that that point about the intentionality of editing and being creative? Yeah, and I'm not just saying cool. that like 100. Yes, <laughs> cool. Yes, yes. like that's, cool. that's it. All no, right, next uh, question, no, Chris no. Farley. Uh, and I, I I know we had talked about this, and we we were going to get to the the fact that uh, we are going to like obviously today when we're recording, I released a little teaser of what I'm working on, but I am working on a big project and coming out with a travel wedding videography course and has different modules in it. And one that I most recently finished was editing. Um, and I went through five of some of my, my favorite films and I opened up the, I, I link the video, the YouTube video, have them watch it and then go through that project. Um, and I knew I was going to be able to talk about it really well. I mean, like these are some of my favorite edits where I felt most creative and stuff. And, um, but I also wanted to pick edits that would be more like mainstream as well. Um, that were like, mm-hmm. okay, let's say you didn't get married on a volcano, you know, as crazy as that might sound that you didn't, um, like, <laughs> what, uh, what, like how would you edit just a normal one day wedding? Um, mm-hmm. that me, let's say you didn't get married in Guatemala, um, <laughs> I can't even imagine. or South Africa. Um, yeah. but, uh, 
what I found when I was doing that is, although I knew, um, I found myself honing in on lots of, uh, on some basic things over and over again, like making sure your, your beginnings start off really strong, um, sandwiching your films that if your beginning is good and your end is good, then your couple's client, your, their expectation, um, of you is going to be met, um, because you're building your, 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 your book ending, um, your film with quality basically. So focusing really heavily on the, how you're starting it and how you're ending it. Um, but, uh, but I, I guess I say all that because as I went through and I had all these, these different kind of points I was making like that and the transitions between songs and how to do that and using music in the same keys and blah, 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 blah. I found that I actually got really detailed with it that I got, I like, I would start breaking down why I put two to three shots, the sequences together from wide shot to tight shot and why I chose to do this shot next to this detail shot and why I put a drone shot here and why, you know, I decided to switch from this first look to the dad's first look. And, uh, you know, just there, there, there was yeah, almost going back to my point when we were speaking at venture about learning as you go in a way that there is a why. So I guess that's a good point to make is like, I was making the point earlier that as an educator, when people come to you in a mentor session or just with a question in a DM and they ask you, Hey, or like giving the advice to the people listening to this, if you are inspired by somebody message, the people that, that whose work you like, and just that push will probably help them if they haven't done it before to understand the reason why in the same way as you were just hitting on Nick, if you ask yourself the question of why, like it's going to be just as impactful um, mm -hmm. and it's going to help you on your journey of learning how to be more creative um, because there is a lot more why behind what we do. And if you don't have a big why behind what you do, um, ask yourself that question. And then if you still can't find it, then you probably need to change something or you probably need to learn some things or find inspiration again and figure out what the why behind somebody else is and then learn from that. But if you, there's nothing wrong with not knowing how, how you feel uh, or the reason why, but if you can't, but if you choose to ask yourself why, and there still is no answer, I, I think that that's a sign that you do need to, you need to kind of not reinvent the wheel, but you do need to go back to square one and figure out how to start honing your skills and, and learning creativity. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's Is that, all really... Am I, am I getting too deep? No, no, not at all. Not at all. I think it's, it's great. Um, we're, we're going to head out to break here in one second, but one thought that I had in the back as we were kind of talking about all of this stuff, when it comes to shooting, if you want to be more creative, a couple of practical things, learn lighting, and I know that that's, that's very, it's very detailed and it's very deep, but if you look at the people that are creating stuff that inspires you, their lighting is going to be on point. So dive into that different focal links. A lot of times people, when they start out because they don't have a lot of money, they're shooting at one focal length and it's typically something a little bit wider just because they like gimbals mm -hmm. and they're flying on that. So learn, use different focal links and then also eye levels, um, uh, uh, you know, typically we like Ooh. to shoot like where our eyes are. And if you want to be more creative in your, your practical filming of stuff, like move your camera down, stand on ladder, like do stuff and get different eye, eye, eye lengths, eye levels, uh, because that's way more interesting, uh, and more creative with your edit. So, uh, I know we've been kind of doing a lot of heady kind of talking, sure. but those were, those point. were three pretty practical with shooting. And I know we can't, you know, dive into lighting a little bit more, but look at lighting, look at your focal lengths of your lenses, and then also eye level. So we are going to run off to break real quick. And when we get back, we're going to talk more with the Cody Stanton Giles. Bow, bow, bow. Sounds good. Attention wedding filmmakers. The best resource for licensing music for your wedding films is Musicbed. I have been exclusively using Musicbed for about eight years and our films are better because of it. I hear a lot from our couples that reach out to us that our wedding films feel different, that the music isn't cheesy. Musicbed has a roster of incredibly talented musicians, bands, and composers who pour their hearts into their work and you can hear the difference. Find the perfect song with Musicbed's intuitive search features like genre, mood, beats per minute, and my favorite, key. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed to learn more and take your films to the next level. Use promo code HTFW23 at checkout to receive one month free with the purchase of an annual subscription. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. You know what can be the worst? Needing to find a lead or a second shooter for your weddings. 
Have you ever asked for a second in our Facebook group only to find that that person isn't available or they're unqualified? If you've ever run into this problem, we've got the solution for you. Second Society. Second Society is an online platform where you can find lead and second videographers and photographers all over the world. List yourself as a shooter or search the database and find the perfect fit for your brand. Let Second Society remove the stress of finding additional videographers and photographers. You can learn more over at howtofilmweddings.com slash second society. Create your account and use promo code HTFW20 at checkout to save 20% off your annual subscription. I All right, guys, we are jumping. back from... <laughs> oh, yeah, Stanton can bring us back. No um, point, Stanton. Thankful you, for that word from our sponsors. Uh, we love oh, them. Man. We praise them. Gosh, that's yeah. hey, uh, one of our favorites. Stanton, do you, do you, do you want to ask us the question of the day presented by Wedding Post House? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Ask yep. us the question of the day. Wedding Post House, a new, a new sponsor. They call weddings and they get wow. everything organized and ready so you can be creatively in control of your edits. They just sync it, organize it, send it back to you. Brady, the owner, was on our podcast a couple weeks ago. Wow. Super great dude. How anyway, much? Okay, question I got a day. question. The question of the day yeah. is: How long are you guys normally spending um, calling photo? Let's say before wedding post house. Uh, uh-huh. How long are you guys t- like offloading, calling, organizing, talking it in bed, reading it a bedtime story? Ooh, I, I have thoughts. Nick, you mind if I? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, okay. please. Uh, so whenever I was doing uh, the majority of my edits, the problem that I would have is that I would get distracted. I don't know if anybody out there gets distracted, but I would, nobody, okay, great, just me. So uh, I'm actually distracted by you guys shaking your heads right now. Uh, No, just the idea that it's like, in theory, I should be able to import the footage, organize it, get it all organized, everything, but I get bored and it'll take me like three or four days back and forth of just like messing with it. I'm like, oh, I'll mess with that for an hour. I'll mess with that for a couple hours. It's like going through finding the selects. I got really good with like uh, hotkeys and just like being able to like power through it. But still, I would spend at least a day. That's my answer. Yeah. I John is really hogging this podcast. Like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I feel I feel bad about it. <laughs> no, um, I I would say like if I were to actually like sit down in a normal you know let's say ten hour wedding day you know if I were to sit down and cull through all the footage and stuff it would probably only take me you know two and a half three hours like if I just maybe not even that long to like sit down and do it. Not like going through the ceremony and finding the audio selects and stuff, but like just culling the footage and footage and getting it synced. But because I hate it so much and I just don't want to do it. I, I do this really cool thing where I find other things that need to be done that don't really need to be done. Like cleaning the top of my refrigerator, you know, uh, getting the dust off of wow. that because that's important to me for whatever reason. When I, when there's something that I don't want to do. Uh, So it usually would take me one, two, maybe even three days to do something that should take me an afternoon just because Mm. I don't want to do it. That's a great question, Stanton. What about you? Thank you. Um, Because we can switch it back over to you and talk about editing now. Yeah. You want me to answer that question? Yeah, answer the question. Okay. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say... I can call through a wedding day in probably about 90 minutes. Like I'll just sit down with like a cup of coffee and just like, like put on Eminem or something and just blast through it. And like, I'm not very selective. And so I can go through it pretty quick. Albeit it still is, uh, excruciating <laughs> 90 minutes. Exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I don't, it's, I definitely don't feel like jumping in and editing it after that. I like want to go take a break. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. So that's the, um, well, if, are, if you yeah, haven't heard, question. yeah, that, that was a good question. So if you haven't heard Wedding Post House, that's what they do. You upload your footage, they cull it, they sync it. So you have your ceremony synced, all your toast stink, all your d- synced, synced, your um, all your stink. dances, all of that stuff is synced together and it's cold and it's by kind of the day. So you're going to have all the bride prep, all the groom prep, all the couple portraits, all of that stuff. And it's, uh, you know, they, if it's a usable shot, they will include it in that, uh, cold stuff to you. So it's, yep, uh, you open up the project and it's just ready to go. Okay. I haven't yeah. talked at all. It's my turn now, guys. Okay. Get I'm, back. Okay. Um, okay. Nick, go yes. lean back, do the head bob thing I was doing. Yep. No. Okay. So I'm sitting here listening to this conversation and I really, I, I was just kind of 
lost in it, enjoying it. So I love a good uh, conversation where we go deep on. Don't don't do that. Uh, I enjoy a good conversation. I'm sitting here thinking like I don't I don't identify as like a super creative person. Um, for whatever reason, like growing up, uh, super creative, very, uh, you know, artistic doing, not just like drawing or whatever, but like just music or played the drums or did different things. And I think you get out of the practice of like just putting yourself into those positions. Um, and I watch people like you, Stanton, who have an engineering background and it's like you have this creativity uh, that you or this curiosity. Uh, you have creativity, but this curiosity of like, I want to know how to do that thing. I'm an engineer by heart. So it's like I need to understand how that works. I will. I need to like that. So that's like your nature is to like figure out how something works. And uh, it, it goes well with uh, just being bold enough to ask certain people. How did you do that? What did, I, I want to copy. And so I think about like the whole 10,000 hours uh, doing anything and you can be an expert in that field, right? Uh, and I mean, there's studies show it's like you, you practice the violin for 10,000 hours, you're going to be one of the right. best in the world. And it's not based on your genetics. It's not based on anything except for you put in the 10,000 hours of Repetition. time. And that's where I really am sitting here thinking like creativity isn't something that like um, just I think we're all born creative creatures, some of us more than others. But like getting those repetitions in, learning where you get inspired, thinking through the reps that you've done in the last six or seven years, Stanton, like getting better edits and you do find that inspiration. And yeah, you emulate people for a while, but then it's like. I, and then people want to emulate you once you start doing your own thing and being creative. And a lot of it, though, and this was something that when you talked to our mastermind uh, last year, you know, it's just like a lot of it, though, is like very fundamental, very basic, very not boring, but it's like you're just mm -hmm. landing it when it comes to shadows on the right sides of the face and the lighting and the composition and and so I guess I'm, I'm saying all this in a recapping of just like the analytical brain that I have of what I just heard the last little uh, segment, but then translating that in over to thinking about like edits and I watch your edits and I think, holy crap, I, how did we, how did he do that? How did he get those fast cuts? How did he get them in that? Like, and there's intentionality behind it, but like if someone's out there and they're saying, Man, I watch I watch films by Stanton, and that's the kind of stuff I want to aspire to do. Uh, what advice would you give them when it comes to like getting going in the in the direction? Not to copy you or anything, but like, how do we get better as editors? How do we get those repetitions in? What did you do to like mm -hmm. get to where you're at? Did you just pop open your first wedding film and you were like, "Wow, I won the Love Stories TV Filmmaker of the Year this." this film or like what went into no. it? What repetitions <laughs> went into that? Yeah. Um, but I think back to like the first podcast, I think it's my third time being on here with you guys. But I think back to the first one, um, it was Ricky and Sarah. It was my Tulum wedding. Um, and I've shot weddings since then that are decently similar. I've actually shot that same venue multiple times at this point because of that video. Um, but I remember when I edited that film, I think I have never put more work into an actual wedding film. I think I probably, I was like timing myself and looking back, I spent like 80 hours on this film. Um, and I like this, uh, this image of like squeezing something through like a cheesecloth comes to mind. Like you're, 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 or like a juicer or something. You know, when you're cranking on like a lemon with like one of those juicing things, you were like squeezing as much juice as you can out of it. And that's what I felt like with my, my first wedding film that was like, that actually had some substance to it. That wasn't just a wedding day. I was like, okay, like I, my, my cure, my, my mind perked up at something unique that happened on the wedding day. The groomsmen were sneaking upstairs to cut the sleeves off a passed out another passed out groomsman that was had been drinking um he fell asleep during the cocktail hour uh, reception and i was like we can turn this into something um and there was like somebody that ran around with like his iphone and was shoving churros in the people's mouths i'm like this going to be we could let's gamify this let's turn it into a game um and that was like um i think that, that some advice i guess what well, the reason i'm saying that is because um one of the biggest things that I try to do is I try to look at my wedding films and, and find the unique thing 
even if it's just like one line that somebody says, like if you if you can get one unique line on a wedding day that's said or one unique thing that happens, whether it's uh, a bride popping a champagne bottle and it hits the lampshade and it falls over or um, the, there's a junior bridesmaid pretending to drink champagne with all the girls or like anything, like uh, something – like literally anything. I'll just say a few other examples. Like uh, during a first or during after a first look, I had a bride and groom that started saying their vows to each other. And um, she said her vows. Then he started saying his. And this was like just us with the photographer. Or it was just photographer, videographer and them there. Uh, he started reading his and she interrupted him. She's like, wait, did you copy me? That sounds just like mine. And I was like, that was probably like the only kind of unique thing that happened on the wedding day. But they absolutely loved that. I started the film off with that. Um, another example is during a first look for this Montana wedding, um, the bride was like doing a spin showing him and she's like, do you like my ponytail? And then he like whispers in her ear, but I can hear it because of my lav mic. He says, your ass looks great too. Uh, and it was just a funny moment. And that's how I started the film off. And then people like, they, they think that that's some iconic film and thing, but it's really what I'm, I guess I'm trying to, to, to talk about, and this is like talking about the fundamentals of things you can tangibly do. And this is something I talked about in the editing module was finding the unique thing and then starting your film off with that. Because what, when you find the unique thing, typically it's going to be more raw in nature. It's not going to be the most beautiful cinematic shot that you're getting. Those are the eye candy shots. The, the unique things are the things that are going to, to stand the test of time that are going to, um, you know, that are, that are going to mean a lot down the road that are the funny moments. Those are going to be the more raw things. And what happens when you do that one, you make them laugh one, you grab their attention, maybe depending on, you know, it could be either or, but then you provide contrast with your film because you're starting off with this really raw thing. And then you can just snap your fingers with like a riser and then going into a really upbeat song. And then the contrast between a really raw kind of moment where your camera's shaking a bit, maybe you're stepping to the side because the photographer was about to, you know, walk in front of you. You might pop focus because the groom is moving, you know, during the first look. Um, what you can do now is like, because that was so raw, now it really accentuates the cinematic nature of the rest of your film because you just started off so raw, but you were making them laugh. So they didn't notice that it was, raw and not up to the normal tier of like the way that your work would look but then you hit them with like the good stuff with like a really 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 solid track um and so you know going back to some fundamental things your music is incredibly important um you know finding a raw moment starting with it or transitioning with it uh, start maybe hype and then transition between a hype opener to the meat of the film, um as it you know uh, like a chapter song or whatever you might be using for the actual meat of your film um, dare I say it. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, that's like, I guess something practical that, uh, I like to motivate people to do is it kind of, that adds spice to people's films. So it's not just mm -hmm. another run of the mill thing is like to hone in. Yeah. You got to salt bay the film. Um, couple, one, one thing, one thing I wanted to add. So over the past couple of years, you know, we've outsourced it, outsourced the majority of our edits and, uh, you know, Jen and I were still getting back and doing color and making little tweaks and stuff, you know, on that sort of thing. But, uh, this last fall, I decided to start editing a few of my own and I found it very difficult to get in and edit them, not because the weddings were bad or the footage was bad, but because I hadn't flexed that muscle of me sitting down and editing in quite mm. a while. And I, I think that maybe as you're out there listening and you're like, oh, I want to edit and I want to be more creative and I want to do this, but you're not <coughs> spending that time and you're not spending that energy of getting in and editing and trying and doing stuff differently, then it is going to be difficult. If you mm -hmm. are going, you know, treating all of your edits the exact same, being very cookie cutter in uh, how you're putting them together and, and just kind of be like, okay, every, you know, I'm, I'm just here to, to make this same thing, then it's going to be a lot more difficult to, uh, you know, mm -hmm. do the, do these kind of edits and look for those things. Also, one thing that I took me entirely too long was I remember having conversations with Jen whenever I first started and she was like, Nick, can you use this? Like, please use this. And I was like, no, we can't. That, that, that's not a wedding day thing, whatever it was. I can't remember off, but you know, it was just like, it was out of the norm in 2016 or whatever to include it in a wedding film. And I felt 
oh, I, I want everyone to like me, so I can't use this in their wedding film, even though it happened on the wedding day, because it was different. You know, it was like, you know, your, oh, your ass looks great comment. You know, like that that kind of thing. Like, you're going to put that in a wedding film? You know, like, w- w- right. yes, you should, because that was them and that was their moment. But um, I want to give you, listener, permission to do something out of the quote-unquote ordinary of what a wedding film should be because ultimately there is no like rule with it. Right. It's just you editing and you doing what you want. So um, yeah, dude, that's, that's I, so important. There's no rule that no. I, I think too, just like watching, you know, being friends with, uh, with Stanton, if, if I dare say Cody over the last <laughs> four, four or five years or however long it's been now watching the effort that he puts in. Like, I mean, I, he's one of the, people that FaceTime me once, twice a month asking questions about uh, when he was starting his destination and elopement uh, group on Facebook. He hired me to do mentor sessions and was asking me questions and how do you do this? And I want to learn how you guys have built this or what have you, um, you know, what are you doing? And it's like, how can I grow this? How can I? And then whenever you started talking about this idea of the, the you're putting your course together, which I'm excited to talk about here in a second. Um, it's like, how do, how do you guys do that? How do you serve people well? How do you make it where you're not too salesy? How do you make it where you're, mm-hmm. you know, it's like asking questions and getting vulnerable. I see that with our friend Emma K Films. Uh, just hired Dude, us for so a mentor session. I know. He's like hungry. And but she's that's, good too. <laughs> that's appealing to somebody. It's not to, to everybody. Some people want to be stingy with their, their trade and their secrets. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, that usually comes from a place of uh, vulnerability or fear uh, most mm-hmm. of the time. And uh, no judgment if that's your style, but just not mine. But like, you know, I think about you and uh, Emma and Emma coming to us for the first mentor session she ever hired us for and had her list of questions. And then when we were in person in Denver, she was really trying to learn color balancing and shooting log. And like, she was like, can you get there early and show me how you do toast lighting? I want to know how to do Like, I want you to teach me. I'll pay you to do it. I'm, and there's like That's this awesome. hunger and watching her charging 10,000 plus for films and watching you charging what you're charging or you, even on your, your educational side, watching you get 7,000 people in your group. And in the last two years, it's amazing. And then watching your Patreon grow and your YouTube channel blow up and like all these things. And there's these common denominators similarly to the common denominators of lighting is good. Composition is good. You understand color balance. You understand audio. You, you know, you've got these fundamentals and you do them right for long enough. And then you just flex those muscles and you do those workouts again and again and then you, you get back to that same workout again and you're better than the last time you did it. And you're better and you're better. And that's why I'm so excited. Uh, and whenever you told me you were going to be doing the course, it was like, oh my goodness, like, tell me about this. And I think a couple months ago we were like, you know, you're talking about it. And I was like, man, you need to make this thing like about like destinations and elopements and like just really flex into that because you're so good at it. And anyway, I, I'm excited to hear about what this course is. I would love for you to tell me what, what it is. I know that you, you just finished the editing module and Mm. that's why we're talking a lot about editing today, but watching you grow this thing, uh, it's been inspiring. So I'm excited to hear all about it. Yeah. Well, just going back to your point, like there's those common denominators, like lighting and composition and stuff. And like, you're basically saying it, but just to kind of like round out what you're saying, if like, if people are consistent and hungry and a little sprinkle of curiosity too, (laughs) wouldn't hurt. Like, you know, being consistent. I I think sometimes of if I would have applied everything that you taught me, how much further I would, um, you know, be now, like I'm thankful for, you know, people might look at what, where I'm at, what I'm doing as success. And I'm very, very grateful for it. So don't get me wrong, but I do often think about, man, if I was just this much, much more, consistent like the power of consistency i think you two are in testament to that like just seeing like how consistent you guys are with the podcast with the mastermind with you know making calibrate like you know investing into people running your facebook group and, and like man i've tried to do like consistency in facebook groups and stuff and at a certain point i was just like all right guys i'm just a travel dude like i'm gonna do my best here but like it's not <laughs> gonna be like how to film <laughs> weddings you know what i mean but it's cool to see like you know even in your mastermind groups like you guys 
I know how much you stuff you guys do. And like to see you guys commenting back to people, I'm like, I don't, I do not understand how you guys have the bandwidth for it, but it's important to you. <laughs> and you're, and you're, and you're hungry for a certain thing. And that's helping people and for, you know, making how to film weddings be the best for, for the mm-hmm. people that are in the group and in mastermind. But anyway, not to just ping pong back and forth compliments here, but uh, you I just can keep to say going. That. Yeah, especially <laughs> towards me. That's fine. Um, but uh, but yeah, so yeah, we were talking a while ago about me putting together a course, and I was trying uh, my original intent. Like, I I want to give people if people are going to pay me, I want to give them the world. I want to give them everything possible. And through uh, another mentor session with with John talking about you know, my course and stuff, he, he kind of, it, it was crazy how it was a push actually not, it, more into alignment with who I am, but it was like, dude, you're like the travel dude. And you like doing that. Like why, why don't stress yourself out by trying to do everything. Focus on like things like that, that you, that you do with your business and that you're like, you want others to, that you've seen other people come to you for. And, and I, you didn't say it exactly like that, but I took it as like, you know, you, 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 and I, well, I guess the application would be, I really am excited about what I do whenever I get to go to Iceland and shoot, you know, these destination wedding or these elopements or go to Tulum and shoot these destination weddings. And I want people to feel that and experience that. Um, but there's so much more to it too. And so like we've already said, I am creating a course, been working on it for a while now, but it's going to have some basic things like, you know, I'm going to be breaking down how I compose, how I light, um, how I do different things along those lines, um, white balance exposure things, uh, just kind of getting to my brain on the basics because the fundamentals are so important. And then there's going to be an editing section where, you know, I break down an entire wedding film, four hours. I, I show myself pulling selects. I'm going to go through five different wedding films. I talk about my ideology. I go through three different teaser films and then there's the color grading side and, and then, you know, uh, demystifying that, pulling back the veil on sound design and another module. These will all be separate modules, um, that, um, while we'll combined to the course, I'm going to have a drone section where it'll also be getting people ready to take the part 107 test um, as well. And so not only letting teaching them how I edit with drone footage, how I fly my drone, my ideology behind it, which as you guys know, if you've listened this far um, to the to the listeners or viewers, that that's really important to me as your why behind it. Um, talking about business as another side, like how I'm marketing myself, um, how I, my client acquisition and communication. Um, and then the big one is flying to Iceland in two weeks to actually shoot, uh, to shoot something. And it's, it's, a, it's technically a vow renewal, but they're, they're my dog sitters and they're like some really cool people that are flying out so that I can film somebody in Iceland. Um, and, and for a while I was, I was kind of floundering on what do I do, you know, I know it's time for me to make a course on my wedding films are done. Like now is the time you've been talking about doing this for a year or two. And now you can really feel this in your soul, but how, how do I do this to where I'm excited about it too? And that I feel like I'm giving people their money's worth. And, and within the span of an hour, it was Iceland just popped in my head. And within 24 hours, I had a couple and my a videographer to film me booked all of our tickets uh, starting to book Airbnbs. And it's just cool to see when you're living in alignment with yourself that things fall in place like that. Uh, by by way of, you know, just sometimes like the, uh, not not to be a hippie, but like the universe willing itself into that, but also the work that you're so much more intentional uh, with what you're doing because you're passionate about it. And so um, this is what I'm putting together. Um, I'm leaving no stone unturned with like what I'm creating here. I'm really trying to, I like I, almost lose sleep at night trying to figure out, okay, did I forget anything in this video? Taking notes after I edit one of my videos, after I've already filmed it and being like, okay, you left this out. You need to make a part two now to make sure that you cover this because this is vital. Um, You want to make sure you give them everything because they're going to be paying you, you know, $45,000 for this course. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm just kidding. Just got to sell one of them. Just just, one person. I just need one person that thinks it's worth 45 K. No, but, uh, yeah, uh, I'm really, really excited about it. it. It's fun to work on something and give it my all and to like mm-hmm. not be like feel not that I have felt shady at all in the past or anything, but it's cool to to be doing something that I'm excited about. Um, I'm, that's something that I'm excited about and something that I can actually give my all to and something that is in my control. Like a wedding day is a live event at the end of the day, and I can only do so much with that. But like I get to make this as good as I want to make it. Um, and so um I have a burning question I have to ask uh, about this. So mm-hmm. if they are your dog sitter, 
who's going to watch your dog while you're in Iceland? The girlfriend. <laughs> okay. Okay. Whew. All right, Don't you good. worry. That was, no, sorry, Nick, I, I'll throw it back over to you. Sorry. Yeah. I, so, so, so I, I wanted to say, um, you know, the, you're still putting the course together. It's not all the way edited. You know, it's going to be mm-hmm. coming out, you know, later this year sometime, I assume. I don't know if you have a date in mind with that, but I know that. End of the month. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You didn't watch the teaser this morning? I, I, dude, dude, <sighs> sorry, sorry. Okay, you, end yeah. of the month. So end of March, um, you you will, uh, right? Is that right? Y- yes, that okay. is correct. Okay, okay, just 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 making sure there. So, um, but uh, one thing that you talked about uh, earlier in the podcast was you know with your edits and starting mm-hmm. stuff off, and uh, if you want email updates and that kind of stuff, Stanton actually has a product for you that can help with starting your films off or being a little bit interesting. Mm-hmm. And it's a little freebie download that we will have a link in our description, but Stanton, why don't you just share what that is? Yeah. Um, I created, uh, you know, as when I've had time, I've been pushing YouTube and trying to, to give away free content as well to people to try to help. Um, but create a super eight download, um, or overlay, um, that you can download for free. Um, and I have a YouTube video walking through how you can actually use that. Um, but you don't have to watch it. It's pretty simple. You just, throw it over your footage and it looks like super eight. Um, but what's cool about that is, is, um, this leans into the idea of, uh, it's even a furtherance of the idea of providing contrast between the raw stuff and the cinematic stuff. You, you're now making it look vintage. Um, mm-hmm. and I mean, as you guys know, super eight's in, um, it probably isn't going anywhere for a while. Um, and it's fun. And it, I mean, it just looks cool as an overlay. And so happy to give that away to, you know, whoever wants it. Okay, and we will uh, we will be sure to put uh, the link to that in the description or a QR code on the screen or something like that for uh, people that are watching on YouTube. So that's what yeah. We're do and just that. one last note: if if anybody's made it this far, um, if you are like motivated by my films or you there is something that it's like, how does he getting that shot or something? I am the guy that will respond to you. Like I will like let you know the thing because I want people like when people have that aha moment, like that's one of my favorite things. So mm-hmm. don't be scared to hit me up. Okay. And you'll, you'll if they want to hit you five up. in the morning, five yeah. in the morning. Yeah. And if yeah. they want to hit you up, where would one hit you up at? Um, five, two, five Perry street, Denver, Colorado, eight, zero, two, zero, four. Just give away my address. Just kidding. No, uh, uh films by Stan. <laughs> Your guys' face. Like, was that? It's got to be your you studio. You guys acted like I gave away my uh, at. Like, like I'm gonna get like an assassin. Like, come was it me. you that gave away Jake Weisler's phone number the other day? Uh, almost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, 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 like one, one digit. I was like, oh, wait a sec. How is that? How is that allowed? Oh, <laughs> uh, gosh. So I'm follow a, films by here. Stanton. Follow films by Stanton. Check out his course. Download that freebie. Check out his Instagram for the thing that Nick hasn't watched yet. The little teaser. Um, <laughs> Better on the share course. it now, Nick. Yeah, tag <laughs> him and share it. Uh, um, Stan, seriously, bro, thanks for being a friend. Thanks for being uh, a bud. And I can't wait to see. I can't wait to watch the course. I can't wait to learn from it. Um, and I know you're going to do super well with it. But thank you for your curiosity and for your willingness to jump on, help our community as often as we ask you. So that yeah. is uh, appreciated patting your back from afar. And if you ever need anything, you know where to find us. Yeah, hug it out. Okay, hug it out. That's the end of the episode, Nick. We're hugging it out. <laughs> Everybody hug it out. Blake, All right. cut to a thing. Well, Stan, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. We appreciate you taking your time. We're excited to see your course and all of the stuff that comes with that. Listeners, thank you for tuning in and hanging out with us. If you are not a part of our Facebook group, we recommend it. All you need to do is search the How to Film Weddings group on Facebook and you can join and be a part of that and you will be in there with 15,000 of your closest wedding video friends. Mm. So that's the How to Film Weddings Facebook group. John, as always, it has been awesome to hang out with you. I appreciate you so much for all the things that you do. Listeners, again, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, we will see ya. See ya. Are you looking for a better way to deliver your wedding films? 
Look no further. Our friends over at Vidflow provide the most flexible video delivery solution on the market. Vidflow is pay per use with no large upfront costs or commitment, and you can cancel at any time. Vidflow offers a premium viewing experience for all of your couples, accessible on mobile, tablet, desktop, as well as their very own suite of TV apps. Each project comes with 10 years of hosting and an experience for your couples that will blow them away. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash vidflow, where you can save 20% off a yearly business membership by using promo code HTFW20. Stop delivering your films the old-fashioned way. Give your couples something to rave about by using Vidflow.